Hi everyone, my name is Kalpit Virwal and welcome to Acad Boost. I am currently pursuing Computer Science uh, B.Tech from IIT Bombay. And in this video, we are going to talk about Computer Programming. Alright, so this video is going to be helpful for everyone who wants to make a career in Software Engineering or everyone who enjoys uh, Computer Science or Computer Programming in general. Alright, so uh, Acad Boost is a startup where we are trying to help students from class 9 till class engineering, like from your school level till your college level in getting skills, in getting mentorship, in getting courses and in getting guidance to become better candidates for job industry and not just get rote learning. All right. So I'll tell you about computer, uh, about uh, competitive programming in this video. All right. So first of all, let us talk about why competitive programming is important. All right. Uh, so a lot of people say that competitive programming is not really relevant to software engineering in general, which is, which is true. I, I mean, like, uh, there are some kind of data structures involved when you design any kind of software system, be it a website, be it an app, be it a uh, Python code or snippet or whatever you are making. But the point of data structures is or computer programming is very different from that. All right. So when companies are hiring uh, students for their jobs, because I also do a lot of hiring for a cat boost. And if you want an internship, you can uh, check out the description. We offer internships as well. So when they're hiring, they don't have too much time to assess how much a student really knows. All right. So what they do instead is that they ask some data structure or some competitive programming type of questions, which you must have noticed. All right. And the reason why they do it is because data structures is a very good way of understanding who knows their shit well. All right. So, so let me explain why, what I mean by this. So let's say, for example, if you are getting entrance into engineering colleges, so you have your J examination. Now I understand that J is probably not the best indicator of who knows computer science well or not, but it is a good indicator of who has got common sense, who has got a work ethic, who has, who has the capacity to work hard. All right. Because these things are important when you're taking admissions in engineering colleges. So that is the purpose of J. Similarly, Competitive programming or your data structures and algorithms will not tell you, not tell how good a software engineer you are, but it shows how good your problem solving capabilities are. It shows how work, how willing you are uh, to learn the data structures and algorithms. And it also shows in general how well a coder you are because these problems, solving them in a little time takes a lot of effort and training to do that. All right. So that is why a lot of companies rely on competitive programming. All right. They ask, so they, they assess your uh, pro profiles on various websites. They also ask a lot of data such as problems. All right. So this is the reason why they do that. Okay. So that makes competitive programming very important and not just your coding projects. Okay. So a lot of people have a lot of projects, but they are not very good at CP, which leads to a lot of issues during the interviews. Okay. So I'm going to tell you how to start CP from scratch. Okay. So I'll tell you three levels of competitive programming. Okay. You can start from anywhere. You could be at any level. Uh, so I'll tell you what way, what to do uh, in each step. So first of all, I would recommend you to get good in one programming language. So it could be C++ or Python. Okay. So why am I saying this? So C++ is, so in, even in IIT Bombay, the first language is taught to students is C++. And it is under, and it is very uh, important to understand that as well, because C++ is a very object. So even Python is object oriented, but in C++, the kind of syntax which you use is very similar to a lot of other languages like Java. Okay. And these languages are important in your Android development and a lot of other things as well. Okay. So if you learn, if you start from Python, for example, then you will have a lot of problem picking up languages like Java or C++ or even JavaScript or whatever you're learning next. Okay. Which is why I recommend that you start with C++. It is, a, it is going to be a bit tougher than Python because Python is a more, it's not exactly like English, but it is more uh, like easy to implement and understand than C++ which is why I would uh, recommend that you should probably start with C++. Okay. You can start with Python also, especially if you are not a computer science student and you're doing for fun, but otherwise I recommend that you start with C++. Okay. So you should become really, really good at one programming language and how to do that. First of all, you should try to watch some YouTube tutorials. Okay. So there are a lot of YouTube tutorials or YouTube channels, which can teach you computer programming. There are a lot of blogs. So you just have to search key. Uh, I want to learn C++. So one very good channel, which I recommend is the new Boston. You can check it out the new Boston. Okay. I hope you can read this. Uh, okay. So just watch these videos and then go to the website hackerrank.com. Okay. And on hackerrank.com, you will get some tracks on C++ programming. So try to get a gold in that. It's not very hard, but it will teach you the syntax really well. Okay. So it has got some very basic problems in C++, very simple math type of problems. Okay. So those are easy to do. You don't really need a knowledge of data structures and algorithms to do that. And you can easily become good at 
uh, solving those problems okay so this is the first step that become good at one program language how you should do that first watch videos from this channel and then try to solve the c++ track on hackerrank.com this is a very good way of doing that next you have to become a coding ninja you have to become someone who is very good and very fast at problem solving okay you don't necessarily have to be a great uh, coder you don't necessarily have to be a great algorithmist but you have to be become a great coder so for that i recommend you a website called spoj okay so spoj is a website uh, where's fair online judge this is the full form so on this website you get a lot of problems you get a lot of uh, content and you have to implement those problems and get marks based on that okay so you should go to spoj you should go to problems and sort them by the number of candidates who have solved them okay why am i saying this because if you sort them by the number of candidates who have solved them then you will get a list of so basically it's like the first one will be solved by the most number of students then you will get second number of students something like this so this shows that the problems are somewhat arranged in an order of increasing level of difficulty and then try to solve at least 100 of these problems okay it will take you a while it's not very easy it will take you at least one to two months if you are very fast and if you are very hard working because you cannot do it in 10 20 days okay it will take a bit of time especially if you are a starting guy okay so just solve 100 of these problems and these problems are not necessarily going to be very algorithmically hard like it won't be that it uses some very advanced algorithms or something but usually it will be problems which involve some basic math okay they will involve some basic thinking some basic number theory and stuff like that so if you are stuck in those problems you can always google okay so 80 percent of these problems are going to be math based but you will face difficulty in implementation so this will make you a very good implementer it will this will make you a very good uh so it, it will make you very good with all the constructs in c plus plus all the stl all the standard libraries all that okay so so till now the level one was to become good at the syntax and basics of one language preferably c plus plus then you should go for 100 problems of spoj it will take a bit of time but it will make you very very good at uh, the language which you have chosen okay you can try to do both as well so you can also do that you so you solve problems in c plus and then you also try to solve them in python this will make you good in two languages okay and it's not going to be like this will not take 2x of the time this will take probably 1.5x of the time because once you have done the algorithm then you just have to implement it in python all right so this is what you can do to become good at uh, so these two steps will make you even if you do these two things right you will become better than 99 percent of the coders out there i you can trust me with this i did this process in my first year summers then and i was not so uh, i entered iit bombay uh, and i was not good at coding at that time like i had never coded before in my life and just after doing this these two things i became very good at uh, programming and uh, like I, I was able to get a lot of confidence in my life after this. Okay, so you should try to do this. This is a very important exercise. Next come level three, which is programming contest. Okay, so this is some real, this is like the real stuff. So once you are done with these, you will be equipped with a lot of knowledge of of implementation. You will become very good at your uh, basic algorithms. So now I would recommend that in between you should try to get a course on algorithms. Okay, so there are a lot of courses on Coursera. There are also courses on YouTube where you can search about the basics of algorithms. Okay. Uh, and I think if you do this exercise, you will automatically learn about a lot, of, a lot of algorithms. So you don't really need to care too much. So you can even start directly. But if you are a CS student specifically, you should try to read a book called CLRS. This is going to be a bit tough, so you can skip it if you are if you are if you are not really interested. But you should get some basic course on algorithms, okay? Because it will teach you uh, a bit about uh, how stuff works, okay? So you should try to get a course in algorithms, and after that, you should start Code Chef or code forces okay so these are two platforms on which you get a lot of problems and you get a lot of contests okay so literally lakhs and thousands of students are compete on this and there are weekly challenges there are monthly challenges there are some daily challenges as well so you can go to these websites i personally recommend this because these problems are a bit tougher and i've already solved the easy and the medium ones here so now you should go for tough problems so you should go to code forces you should try to uh, enroll yourself in competitions and try to do the timed competitions because eventually you have to give your coding interviews which are going to be timed all right so try to get a good rating on these as well because you if you if you have a good rating on code forces code chef you can always show it on your resume and it leaves a very good impression on the interviewer if you have a good rating on these platforms all right so i would summarize what i said so first of all you have to become very good at one programming language preferably c plus or python and it's good if you become good at both Okay, because in real development, Python is much more important than let's say C++, but C++ is like the BAP language. So if you master it, it's, it becomes easy to master others. Then you should go to Spodge and try to solve 100 problems in the order of 
decreasing number of candidates who have solved that problem and then you should go and then you should try to take a course on algorithms if you are a cs student you can try to read clis it is going to be a bit tough but if you read it you will get a very good knowledge of your uh, algorithms if you don't have time to read clis you can take up some basic course on algorithm you can go to coursera and just type algorithms i think princeton university has got a good course on algorithms on that side uh, and if you don't want to do that course that is also okay you can directly go for contest but you will get a bit less marks because some of these problems depend on algorithms like uh, dfs bfs or in general on stuff like that uh, so if you have done those courses then it will be very good for you otherwise you can directly go for your code chef or code forces contest okay i personally prefer code forces because it is a bit tougher all right so i hope you like this by the way if you want to practice algorithms you can also go to hacker rank okay on hacker rank there is an algorithm track as well you can go there you can uh, try out that algorithm track because that will so, uh, help you know about algorithms just by problem solving okay so you can try that also but this is a bit tough okay it's not easy which is why i've arranged this in this order that first then second then this hacker rank and then code chef code forces okay so this diagram has become very messy now so i'll end the video here okay so don't forget to check out our description section we have got a lot of content over there so we have got a blog of acad boost where we give advices we've got this channel where we give advice in video format okay we'll try to bring some more guests in the future as well okay uh, and you can also check me out on instagram my links are given in the description where if you have any queries you can send them to me i try to reply to dms as much as possible or at least i try to make videos on the topics which people are requesting the most okay so i hope you liked our initiative do stay subscribed we will post a lot of courses a lot of content a lot of advice on how to succeed in your career as a software engineer and even in other branches of engineering so i hope you like this video all the best stay safe and uh, i hope you have a nice day